So I wanted to make this tutorial for myself as much as anybody else. I was working on my current project, working on some UI, and I needed to make an, a scroll list that had expandable items in it that you could open and close, and the list would react, and it would react in good time. Some of what I encountered was the I, uh, was the problem that as I was clicking on buttons to expand, as you can see like I'm doing on my screen, that it seemingly there was a delay, that it was like the UI wasn't refreshing. Um, I did some searching and, and other people had run into similar problems and uh, there's some commands you can call to force Unity to refresh, but that was only kind of sort of working and it really felt like I was kind of hacking it together. So I kind of took a deep breath and uh, come up with what I'm going to show you now. So this is a scrollable list or a scroll view. Uh, it's a stock piece from Unity. And each of these items in here have a button that allow you to collapse or expand the item and the list and the scroll view react to that. So what I want to show in this tutorial is how I put together each of these items and how I put together the scroll view. So let's take a look at what I put together here. I've inserted a scroll view, and this is just a stock Unity scroll view that I've inserted. You can get to that by right-clicking, go to UI, and scroll view. I've changed a few settings to turn off the horizontal uh, scroll bar. There's no need for that in this setting. Uh, as well, I've come down here to the horizontal scroll bar, and the visibility has been set to permanent. And then I stretched out the vertical scroll, scroll bar to match the full size of the window. If we then go inside a little bit, by default you'll get this viewport item and this content item. And the content item, that's where everything's going to go for your scroll view. So on that content item, it's essentially an empty game object when Unity creates the scroll view. I've added in a vertical layout group. I've changed the padding a little bit and spacing just to make it look a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer. The key settings here are the child control size. Both of these boxes need to be ticked, and the child force expand is unticked. We then put on a content size fitter and set the vertical fit to preferred size. You could also set the horizontal fit to preferred size, but I, I was dealing with the horizontal fit with layout elements. So that's our main setting there for our content. And then each item, so I have several items here, uh, is broken down into a bunch of sub items. So on this list item, so this is gonna be anything that you're gonna put in your list, it's gonna need a content size fitter as well. And then again, the vertical fit is sit, set to preferred size. In this case, the way that I've created it with a header on top here and content below, it's also gonna need a vertical layout group. And once again, the toggles here at the bottom, the uh, child control size needs to be toggled for the width and the height, and the child force expand needs to be untoggled for the width and the height. So let's open this up and take a look at what we got. So here's our header, and our header uh, consists of a button here on the left and some text. So to keep that organized, we need a horizontal layout group. And once again, common theme here, the toggles need to be set with the child control size, both of those ticked, and the child force expand unticked. And here's where the piece uh, that, the key piece here was, we need to start using layout elements now. And so I have set this to a preferred width and left it at that. That's enough to keep that header filling up that space If we open up our header, we can see what's inside here. I have two buttons here, a shrink and an expand, and I've just, I've just grabbed an icon that I had to indicate uh, the shrink and expand. We'll talk about the buttons here in a bit, but let's look at the uh, layout items. So for the buttons, they have a layout element, and both buttons, the layout elements are identical. So we've got a preferred width, a preferred height, and flexible width and flexible height. So I've set these flexible widths and heights to zero because I don't want my button changing size. Um, it's not 100% necessary, but it works pretty well. Looking at our text, shrink up our text, look at our layout element. So here I've got a preferred width, a preferred height, and in this case, I set the flexible width to one. Um, in, in some ways, that was a little bit of a hack that, that expanded my text to the full width that it could expand. And I've set the flexible height to zero because I don't want this to be um, expanding beyond that. I've also set the preferred width and preferred height. 
And again, the numbers that I've set here aren't very important. Uh, they're just what I have created here. Let's go ahead, we'll come back to our buttons here with the shrink and expand and look at how those are functioning. Uh, the item content, which this is where any buttons or knobs or settings or any information that your player is gonna need or you need to show in your list, it's gonna be inside this. So this item content here uh, has a layout element in it. Again, preferred width, preferred height, and then flexible width is set to one. Now, again, if you, whatever structures you had inside this item content, you might need a horizontal layout or a vertical layout. Um, that'll depend on what you've created. I've simply just dropped a piece of or, uh, UI text in there and called it good enough. Um, but again, the important piece there is the layout element so that it holds its width um, and such things. Okay, so let's look at our um, Let's look at our buttons here and see how those have been set up. So this was done with, with no scripting and just using the uh, on-click event in the inspector. And so the shrink button, we're gonna grab this item content and we're gonna turn it off. So the function here is game object set active to false. We're gonna turn the expand button on. Again, same, same function, game object set active. And at the last one that we do is we turn the shrink button off, and that does need to be at the end. If you turn the button off uh, at the beginning, none of the other uh, events will be called or executed. Expand button's pretty similar. We grab the shrink button, we turn it on, we grab the item content, and we turn it on, and again, at the end, we uh, turn off the expand button. So that's really all there is to it, and once again, just to show how that's working, these buttons here, are all they're doing is turning off this item content and toggling the shrink expand buttons and all the layout elements are doing the rest of the work to adjust the size of the to adjust the size of the list and you notice there my scroll bar disappeared and because i have my flexible width set to one the items expanded and they adjust to the scroll bar on the side so there you go um i hope this is helpful to my future self or maybe someone out there um, creating expandable scroll view lists. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you next time.